Hi everyone, this is Heather Lachenden from the Flourish Academy. This is episode 545. Today we are talking about giving your friends and family discounts. But first, we are releasing a new segment to the podcast later this week. It's called Flourish in Five. It will be released on Friday. Get it, Flourish in Five on Friday. It is... It's along the same lines of the Flourish Academy podcast and that it's personal growth and development and quick tips to help you improve your life and your business, but it's in five minutes or less. And it's just going to be unscripted and me sharing something I am learning or listening to or reading that I think you might find helpful. So that's Flourish and Thrive. It's on Fridays. The regular podcast is released every Tuesday morning. You can find both of these on any podcast player. So make sure you please subscribe and leave a review. That's really helpful. Share with your friends. But in addition to that, Flourish in 5 will also be available as video on YouTube. So this is not a professional video setup. It just means I'm running the camera as I am recording the episode. So it's almost kind of like behind the scenes. Those episodes will be on YouTube as well as the blog and any of your podcast players. So make sure you check that out. But this question came in this morning from my friend Carrie, and I thought it was so interesting and worth talking about. She said, I have my laptop here because there were a ton of really good responses. She said, I feel like this might be a controversial topic or question, but I'm curious, do you offer your friends a discount for your photography services? Okay, I'm gonna go through some of these responses, and I almost feel like I'm teaching a Photoshop video here because there are about 85,000 different ways to approach this. And if it works for you and if it works for your friends and your family, then that's totally fine. I think if I could, if I could get to the question behind the question, I think what Carrie is asking is how can I structure discounts or should I give discounts to my friends and family? How can I structure it so that it feels good? So that it feels worth my time, I don't feel taken advantage of, and they feel good about it. Okay, before I dive into some of these responses and we talk about them, I will say this. I approach it, it's either all or nothing. Either you are a client and you are paying full price, or you are a friend and I am gifting it to you for free. There is no in-between. So there are actually no discounts. There's no friends and family discount. It's just either you're a full paying client or I have decided to offer you my services for free. I think this also depends on what type of photographer you are. I'm primarily a wedding photographer. I'm really not in the business of doing weddings for free, although I have. I certainly did them for free when I was starting out to learn. Uh, and then once it became my full-time job, I offered a free wedding per year to a military member because that's something I felt good about. But I would not just give friends and family a discount on my wedding services. I mean, if you think about it, especially a Saturday in, say, June, any Saturday in the summer, if I give a friend a discount, you know, let's say it's half off. So I charge $5,200 and now it's $2,500 approximately. And then, I mean, there's only so many Saturdays I can work in the summer. So my business will take a hit because of that. Oh, thank you, Christina. I'm so glad you're here. Because this is pretty important, especially for people like you who are, who are launching their businesses and deciding how they want to approach discounts. I currently have a few friends right now that I will do sessions for free when I have time and when it feels appropriate. But there's no such thing as a discount for me. That's just not going to happen. Also, I have a ton of cousins and I'm a wedding photographer. My mom has a total of eight brothers and sisters on her side. So we'd have these family reunions, all these cousins. When I got into wedding photography, I actually made an announcement and I said, essentially I'm paraphrasing, hey yo, I cannot wait for you guys to get married, but I wanna attend your wedding as a guest and I wanna have fun. I don't wanna work at your wedding. I never wanna work at a family wedding or a friend's wedding. I much prefer to go into a wedding of 150 to 300 people who I've never met, complete strangers. It's actually easier for me than working with friends and family. I don't wanna do it, so I'm not going to. So I made an announcement and nobody ever expected me to. I said, if you would like help finding a photographer that works for you in your style and budget, I would love to help you because I have a lot of friends, but I wasn't going to photograph their wedding. There is no way. So. I made that announcement. That was like, that's, I feel this is a little easier or more clear to talk about when we're talking about weddings. I think this is going to get a little bit more challenging when you're talking about 
families or children, right? Because you have friends, they have kids, you have your camera, and then where's the line and what's fair? Okay, so I wanna go over some of these responses with you to give you some different ideas on how you might want to approach this. But I would start by very clearly defining the question. The question is not, do you offer your friends and family a discount? Hi, Laura, I'm happy to see you. I miss talking to you. The question is, how can I structure this so I feel good about it? So maybe you have this feeling of um, equality, you want it to feel fair, or maybe you're worried about where do I draw the line, how do I draw that line? I think, I think that's a question that requires a lot more clarity, and I think that we should cover it, and you should be pretty. Oh, hi, Chrissy, hi. And you, oh, she said, I've done my immediate cousins for free. She enjoyed giving it as a gift, and that's perfectly fine. That's that's up to you. If you want to give your services away and it makes sense based on the season you're at, like for instance, if it's April and it's a pretty day and you're bored and your friends are over and you want to take photos of them, of course. But if it's your fall busy season and you have 10 friends asking you to do discounted sessions, I personally think that's stupid because that's your prime time to make money. Okay, stupid is a strong word. I just wouldn't do it at that time. Okay, so when she said this is controversial, I, I liked Dan's response to this. Dan said it shouldn't be controversial. You should just decide how much is too much where you are paying them to do photos for them. I would do what we talked about on a previous coaching call. Maybe you could, there's an inflated price that you then discount. Eh, I wouldn't do that. Um, on a de devil's advocate note, I watched a really good talk from Chase Jarvis where he advised not to give discounts and if it's someone you really want to help out to do just the session fee or no charge at all. Okay, so that's my approach. No, no, it's either you are a client and you're paying me and I'm treating you as such or I am donating my services for free because that's what I want to do and it makes sense for that relationship. He basically pointed out that if you give a discount that people will just want more and they will not value your product. <laughs> Bingo. There's the issue, Carrie, is that if you're giving all of these different discounts and freebies to friends and family, there are absolutely going to be people that take advantage of you. I'm going to come back to this. Let me finish what Dan said. In the past, I have told friends that I don't give discounts, but I give additional print credit for them to have some kind of complimentary product. That way you're at least making money for a session fee, your time is covered. But in the end, it's your business. You do whatever you feel comfortable with, which is the bottom line. And I think Carrie knows that. She was just trying to get some ideas maybe of how we approach this. When I started out early on in my career, I was having a difficult time defining this line. In other words, it was very blurry. Who was I going to give a discount to? And you know, I was charging this person $50, this person $100, and, but I've known this friend longer, but this is family, but I'm not as close with her. And, you're, and it's just, it's getting, it's getting very unclear and, and confusing for you. And then you're trying to keep track of it. Am I being fair? And I just don't think that that's a good approach. But I did have a friend who really, really took advantage of this. I mean, like over the top, give me more, want more, was never satisfied, was demanding about when we shoot and where we shoot. And at that particular time in my career, I just didn't have, I guess, the self-esteem or confidence that I do now. Because right now, I would be like, I'm um, sorry, if I'm giving you a free session, it's actually going to be here at my house on this day at this time. If you can make it great, and if you can't, that's fine. But when I say she took advantage of me, you understand what's happening there, right? She didn't take advantage of me. I allowed that to happen because I didn't have a good structure, system, process in place that I knew how to follow. I don't think there was any ill intent on her part. And I don't think for most, okay, some people might have ill intent, but I don't think most people do. I think they're, they're taking advantage, they're just trying to work with you and you are allowing them to take advantage. If you feel resentful towards a friend or family member, that's a clue. And that started to happen to me with her. And so I kind of pulled back and I was annoyed and resentful and frustrated. I never said anything to her. It was all in my own mind. This was, this was my own stew that I decided to sit in. And after I grew in my confidence, self-esteem business, I decided to set ground rules in place and I started photographing her family again for free, by the way. 
and I just I just put boundaries around this is all about boundaries and it has to work for you I don't think you should be photographing every single one of your friends and family members for free I don't I think if you want to build your portfolio and practice and you're doing it because you don't have business or you just have time to do it that's that's fine I don't have a problem with that but if you are replacing the possibility of paying clients by shooting all of these free sessions then I think we have a bigger discussion here so Jess says you have to be very clear with boundaries and your policies this can become a very slippery slope which is why in all of these responses to this thread and everybody had a lot I'm gonna share several of these my one of my favorites was from Jess it simply said no period <laughs> Talk about clarity, right? The answer is no. If I have a friend or family member come to me with maybe a maternity or a newborn, I actually don't even offer those sessions anymore. I say, oh, thank you so much for thinking of me. Thank you. I don't offer those types of sessions, meaning I'm actually not very good at it and I'm not just trying to be humble. It's not my thing. Here are three or four of my photographer friends that offer those types of sessions. Um, I would be happy to put you in contact with them. In other words, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I'm going to help you find somebody that works for you, but I'm not doing it. How many times have you done something that you either don't enjoy or, or you're just not good at because you felt bad? That feeling bad or guilty is no way to run your life or your business. If you decide, hi Mike, happy Sunday. If you decide, I have a friend who I love dearly and will do anything for, I offer her free sessions all the time. That's my decision. She's super grateful, always very kind, will do whatever I say, whenever I say. She's very respectful of that. I do have to tell you a story. The first time I photographed her family for free, this is many years ago, I showed her the photos and I was with her and she was looking at them. She looked at her photos. She looked at me, she looked at her photos and she was like, you're actually a real photographer. Like these are, these are really good. You, you actually know what you're doing. And I was like, yeah, I, I've been doing this at this point now for over 17 years. So I could hope I, I would at least be able to take a photo that's sharp and in focus and, you know, decently edited. She was like, no, really, these are really good because I know how my family can be. And I said, thank you. Okay, yeah, for real. The truth is I'm actually really, really good at editing. editing. I, I am certainly a competent photographer, but I'm really, really good at the edit. So I'm able to take something that is maybe just okay and make it look much better than it actually was. Um, Jess says, I'm putting a stop to doing sessions I don't like doing now and it feels amazing. Oh, Chrissy, I missed that. You said... I got roped into a newborn once and it hurt my soul. And you probably knew it. You probably knew it when you said yes to it. You knew it when you were shooting it. Like, this is a mistake and I'm not even getting paid. So you have to decide what do you love to do? And out of your friends and family, who would you love to do that for? Either because it's, it's something you want to give to them. You know, you want to just donate. Like, I feel like I'm donating these sessions to my friends. Or because you want to practice. You know, there there have been times when I've called up a, a friend and said, hey, I'm, I'm trying something new. I want to practice something. Would you mind? Could you stop over? Could I take some photos? Yes. I have also found really creative ways to take photos of people that I want to take photos of that I know wouldn't hire me, that are friends of mine, but I want to get them in front of my camera, but I don't want to do it for free. This is how my brain works. There, there are two people I'm thinking of specifically right now, two of my friends from church that I really, really adore, and they're younger than me. And in the past couple of years, they were both pregnant. And it, I knew that they wouldn't, well, I, I didn't offer maternity sessions, so I don't think they would have hired a photographer for maternity anyway, but if they did, I'm sure they wouldn't have wanted to pay my prices. So I thought, how can I do this for them you know, in a way that they get photos and I feel good about it. So I asked them to model for Camera Club. So our last, I think they were the last two maternities ago, because we've done several since then. But we photographed them. I, you know, had them get dressed up and, you know, hair, makeup, if they chose to do that, and brought them here. We had 
um, at each of those sessions, I want to say at least 40 photographers on the property photographing them. So it was a, it was practice for photographers. We got to have fun, two beautiful models. They got photos, I got to shoot them, and I felt really good about that. But they weren't the type of friends I would just call up and say, I'm a, you're pregnant, I'm gonna photograph you for free. Like that, that wouldn't, that wouldn't make sense. So I just found out a way to make that work. I hope that you find that helpful. Okay, so let's go through some of these responses. Um, Joseph says, yes, friends and family, especially right now, times are tough for a lot of people. Also done quite a few more freebies for seniors of late, but I'm also trying to get my name out there and build a portfolio. So if that means offering some discounts or free sessions in exchange for experience and a marketable product, I'll take the trade off for now. That makes total sense to me, Joseph, if you want to do that. Um, but do it because you're building your portfolio and you want to help, but don't assume that times are tough for everyone because I know a lot of people that are actually doing really well right now and we assume that because it's a difficult time economically that everyone is struggling and that's not necessarily the case. Of course, if you know someone directly and you wanna help, that's fine. Okay, Jess is like, no. Um, and Carrie asked her, Jess, did you ever offer discounts? And she said, no, because I don't believe in discounting my work or my time. I will only shoot for free for three immediate family members. So she has just defined a system and process that works for her. Molly says, I would much rather work for strangers. I agree with that, I'm the same. Friends don't usually spend my prices, even with steep discounts. And then, you know, what happens is then they want more, 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 and then you feel taken advantage of, and you're like, wait a minute, my clients will spend $2,000 on this package, and you won't even spend 100, and you don't respect me, and you don't understand, and it gets into this whole thing. So again, I would, I would really implore you to think Either they are a paying client or you're giving it for free. And by free, I mean I'm shooting it and I'm giving them the files. I'm putting them in a Pixie Set Gallery and they can download them. There is no in-between for me because where does it stop? Where does it start? Where does it end? How much? Is there like this person, because I've known them for you know 8.2 years, they get a 52% discount and this person gets a 25%. I mean, no, no. The next thing you know, you're managing all of your discounts when you should be focusing on growing your business. And not worrying about all this. Okay, um, and then Jess asked a really good question. She asked Carrie, what do you want to do? What is the goal? What do you want to see happen? And um, she said there are people that close to me, close to me that don't have great photos and I want to do that for them. But there are other groups of people I would consider to be close friends and I want to offer them a discount. Um, however, other friends beyond the core group I'm not sure if they would be able to pay my full price, but that's not up to you to decide. I'm just curious how others approach it. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, you're curious how others approach it. Uh, Christina said, I give discounts to people I want to give discounts to. Huh. Very well said. You can do whatever you want. Sometimes people ask and I don't want to, so I say no. Sometimes people don't even ask, but I want to for some reason, so I do. <laughs> do whatever you want. I love that, Christina. That's very good, okay. Yeah, and sometimes maybe you're even bartering or trading with someone. The other Jessica says, I had a friend that booked a mini session spot with me once and the cost was $75 and she only paid me 50. <laughs> like, you can't swing that other 25? Okay, see, and then it gets weird, right? Why would you want to do any sort of business with friends? Don't mishear me. I said, why would you want to do business with friends? What I didn't say is you can't donate or just offer your services for free to friends. That's what I would do because then there aren't any hard feelings because I have decided to give my services for free and not this discount craziness. Um, Carolyn says, I do only because I don't do it for a living. So friends and family sometimes get major discounts or even free, but it's a side hobby for me. So do what you feel comfortable. Yes, I agree with you, Carolyn, but when you say it's just a side hobby for me, um, number one, I want you to take the word just out of that. It's a hobby for you and that's fine. But let me ask you, how much money have you dropped on gear? Your camera and your lenses. It's a hobby, it's great. You can spend money on a hobby, there's no problem. But if there are a bunch of friends asking you to take photos and they might be willing to pay but you don't know, but you won't even ask because it's a hobby, I think you're treading on dangerous ground. I think you should think about what you have invested 
in your hobby and if somebody wants to pay you for that you you can do whatever you want you can do whatever you want that's just my opinion on that uh amy fisher says i do if i want to which is fair for core people i always have my camera at events and family and functions um it perturbed me when my one cousin who considers herself a photographer was going to hire a photographer for her parents anniversary party but didn't so i heard her tell her brother amy will just do it why not pay me instead because i'm family of course right see oh resentment um then she goes on to explain some other family dynamics i if my cousin was having a party for her parents i am attending as a guest please hire someone else i do not want to photograph your wedding your event your birthday party i want to show up as a guest um Chrissy says, side note, I have stopped taking my camera to gatherings. Oh, I'm happy to give the weddings that's in my heart, but gatherings, I'm not, I'm not working. I'm not working unless I'm getting paid several thousand dollars. Dana said, I knew this would be a problem for me because how do you draw the line? Right. How do you draw the line and feel like you are being fair when a majority of your clients consider some type of friend? Well, this is, okay, before I go on, Dana, this is very true. <laughs> I become friends with a lot of my clients. And if I decided to give discounts to all of my friends, I would not have a business. I would be out of business because I would not be making any money. So be careful. So, okay, Dana says, I drew a line early on and I stick to it. I offer discounts to family members and friends that were in my bridal party. Oh, okay, that's pretty fair. Keeps the list definite, which gives me peace. Yeah, because here's the thing. That was actually really smart. If there, if you were in my bridal party, that means we're pretty close. So I'm going to give you the discount. Because if you say family, I mean, don't you have some friends in your life that you are much closer to than actual family members? So why, would, why who, right? It just gets really confusing. Um, Chrissy said, especially when I, may, when I miss a lot of gatherings due to my paying clients. It made me resentful. That's a clue. If something is making you resentful, stop doing it, which she did. Okay. Colleen says, no, she does not give discounts. Well, let me adjust that statement, not usually, but if a friend hired me and I know my price is stretching them, I can't even finish that sentence, Colleen. If a friend hired me and I know my price is stretching them, how do you know that your price is stretching them? That is is so unfair, dare I say condescending, to assume that your price is stretching something. You don't know what they have in the bank. You have no clue. You cannot judge or even think. You have no idea how much money people, how often have you driven up to a home? Okay, maybe this hasn't happened to you. It's happened to me. I know it's happened to several of you. You drive up to a very unassuming home and then all of a sudden these clients are dropping thousands of dollars on their photographs. And then you drive up to the, what looks like maybe a multi-million dollar mansion and these people are so cheap they won't spend even $500 on a package. You can, you have to stop. You cannot assume. You said, I know my price is stretching them. I would challenge every statement in that sentence. You know? You know. How do I know? I don't, I don't know what some of my closest friends make. How would I know it's stretching them? And everybody has a different approach with money, meaning some people will go on and on about how broke they are when they have a ton of money. And some people will act like they have a ton of money when they're actually broke. There is no way for you to know that your price is stretching anyone. Do you hear me? Okay. Wow. Okay. That was... That was a trigger for me. <laughs> I know my price is stretching them. No, you don't. No, you don't. Okay. Um, I simply tell them if they cannot swing the price tag to let me know what they can do. And I'll customize the package a bit. Okay. There's more to this post. Colleen and I are friends. Let me say that. We hang out together. So I know that she is receiving this coaching as it is intended, which is to help her. But to ask someone what they want to pay for something is probably not the best approach. If you, if I needed a new car and you said to me, how much do you want to pay for this car? I'd be like $500. I have a brand new car, 2021. I want to pay $500 for that car. Okay. I obviously know that that's not reasonable, but that's what I want to pay. I, you can reframe this in a different way. 
Well, first of all, if we go back to your statement about you know the price is stretching, you don't know that. But you could say, instead of what can you afford, because, hi Becky, because people are gonna say, well, I can't afford it, I can afford $50, that's what I can afford, okay, that is such a load of crap. Why don't you say something like, um, this is my usual price, and I'm willing to give you this discount, would that work for you? So let's say your price for a session is $500, and you say, my typical fee is $500, how about I give you um, this discount that you've decided on, and you say, it's $100 off, it's $400, would that work for you? Um, because here's the thing, if you shoot for $500 and then you're offering somebody a discount and they're nickel and diming you and they want you to come down and you end up shooting it for $50 or $100, you are going to feel resentful. Um, you can tell me you're not, but you are. I would never ask someone what they can afford for something. Not in a million years. I would say, here's the price. Here's what I can offer you. Will that work for you? Question mark. And then it's up to them. Becky says, this took me a long time to spit out my price. Well, and that's because we assign some sort of meaning to the price about our worth. This is, this is what it's worth my time. So not even about how good you think you are or what your experience level looks like or what type of camera you have. What is it worth for you to leave your family? For me, at this point in my career, 17 years in, I live uh, in the middle of the woods on top of a hill. To get me off of my hill on a Saturday in the summer is going to cost you $8,200. End of story. That's what it's worth to me. Do I think my photographs are worth $8,000 or, or that makes any kind of logical sense? Uh, maybe, maybe not, but people will pay it and that's what it's worth to me. Because if I left for less than that, I wouldn't feel good about it. So if somebody's willing to pay it, that's up to them, not you. It's not up to you. What is up to you is defining what you feel your time is worth, regardless of your skill, and then just giving them that price and seeing if they wish to pay it. And if they don't, that's great. And if they do, that's fine too. Um, well, yeah, Stella says what gets me is they'll spend 3,000 to 5,000 for music, but don't want to spend money on photos like that they'll have for a lifetime. Yeah, and, but here's the thing. Everybody has different priorities and you can't judge the priority. I know people, I have friends like this, for their wedding, their food was like their number one priority. They, they spent all of their budget on the food. They wanted people to have a really nice dinner and photographs weren't a priority to them. I've also seen that flipped. Uh, I had a client once who spent almost her entire budget on me. Uh, and this was before I was even, I wanna say, this is right before I went to 5,200. So maybe I was around the mid fours and photography was really, really important to her. She put all of her budget in that her friends and family did the favors, did the flowers, they had it at a lodge. It was beautiful and perfect and that's what they chose. Not up to me, what they decide to prioritize, right? Um, Yes, Jess, this was a couple minutes ago. She said, you're opening up a portal to zero boundaries. Of course, they want to pay full price. It, they won't want to pay full price. If that option is not to, right, if you said to me, what is it? Oh my goodness, what do I want to pay? I don't want to pay anything. But Becky says, what, what cost would it be to go out on this cold winter day? So in our area, I don't know where you're at geographically because you guys, we have Flourish Academy members all over the world. But where we live in western Pennsylvania, southwestern Pennsylvania, we're having a snowstorm and it's cold and it's snowy. Yeah, you're not getting me off the hill. It's not worth it to me. I, I would rather be here teaching than, than out shooting. Okay, so Colleen will customize a package to fit that. Although I do offer the folks at my kids' small high school a slight discount if they book in my less busy months. I like that. I like that. If you're not as busy and you want to fill your calendar, that makes sense to me. That way, if they are strained financially, they gave a less, they are given a less expensive option and I get my slow ones filled. Okay, that to me is win-win. I love that strategy, Colleen. That is brilliant. But the one of asking people what they wanna pay, no, the answer is no. I was working with one of our Elevate members a couple of weeks ago on a Lifeline and she was telling me about how, I don't think we were talking about discounts, but maybe um, over-delivering too many photos and how she handles the client. And she said to me several times on the call, she said, it's just, I'm, I'm too nice. I just, I'm just really nice. I just want to, and she said it, you know, repeatedly. And finally I said, you keep saying that. You keep saying that you're too nice. And I think that that's a really clever way of saying I don't have any self-esteem. 
Ouch. Okay. Keep in mind, Elevate is about tough love and pushing people outside of their comfort zones. If you are doing things like not establishing boundaries, giving too much away, and you're you're trying to make yourself feel good about it by saying, no, I'm just too nice. I'm just, mm, Heather, I'm just, I'm just a really nice person. I'm just so nice. False. You are lacking self-esteem or you don't have confidence. And who wants to hire a photographer that does not have any confidence? So the way that you can exude confidence, so the opposite of that is to have boundaries, to have a price list that you stick to and to have some sort of defined system or process in place for what you are going to do for friends and family, whether that's a discount for certain people, or again, for me, it's either your client or you're free. That is completely up to you. Um, Vicki says, I'm guilty of giving too many images. We all are, we all are. And you know, that's typically we're worried that we don't have something they'll like. There's some sort of aspect in that that's like, I don't trust myself. I don't trust myself to give them only the 15 images I said I would give. So I'm gonna give them 80, and hopefully they'll find ones in there and they're like, but what you actually do is dilute it. You water down your good photos, photos excuse me, with your mediocre ones because you're over-delivering. Over-delivering is always a lack of self-esteem. You, you're worried that you're not giving something that they might want, so you over-deliver. I know that is maybe not easy for some people to hear, but you have to have, if you are going to take this seriously and you don't wanna feel resentful or like you're being taken advantage of every five seconds, I think it would behoove you to put something in place on how you're going to approach friends and family. And one thing I would caution you on is to watch out for something I call situational ethics. Now, I always say you can run your business however you like, and you can decide one day to do this and the next day to do that. But situational ethics means that you change your ethics for every situation, which means you have no ethics. So it's not that you can't be flexible and malleable to the situation, but I'm just, I, just want, I just wanted to plant that seed of caution. Watch out for situational ethics because if it's different for every single person, number one, it's going to be really hard to keep track of. You're not going to show what you're not going to be sure. What did I do for that person last time, or was it the other one? And what? And then, what if your family members and friends start talking, and she's like, "Well, she never does that for me, and she did what for you? And how do you, how do you deal with that? Oh, I don't know." And then everybody's mad at you because you're you're offering something different to everyone. I want to run my business with as much integrity as possible in a way that suits me and my lifestyle and my season of life, but also is mutually beneficial to my clients and then ultimately my friends and family. So I, I don't, I don't wait reactively to establish that when a friend asks. I did, but I've, I've been in the game for a little bit of time, so now I know how I'm going to approach it. And it's either you can hire me for this if I offer those services, here, here are the prices, or let me help you find someone that suits your genre and your budget. I'm happy to do that. I do it every day. I'm getting messages. Um, Heather, I need a photographer for my kid's birthday. Heather, I need a photographer for a wedding. I need, do you have anyone? And I'll post or I'll just send some names or whatever that looks like because I don't offer that. Or if it's a friend and I decide, okay, this is a really close friend. And when I say really close friend, uh, let me think about this. Integrity is important to me. I want to say that there are two people that I, I have given sessions away for free. Two friends that I'm like, I will, I will shoot your family for free because I feel that it's the right thing to do and I want to do it. Everyone else is either getting referred or they're getting my price list. And if they, you know, to photograph a family for me right now is $1,200 for the fee. If you want to pay it, I'm pretty happy. And if you don't, then I'll send you to Colleen because she's going to let you pay whatever you want. So, okay, Christina says, she's, <laughs> she's getting into it this morning. I'm glad I'm learning this. Yeah, hearing it. Yeah, for sure. Because if you're starting out and you're hearing this for the first time, my job as your mentor is to save you time, effort, heartache, and struggle, right? I always say a mentor is like talking to myself in the past. So I'm talking to myself 
15, 17 years ago. Things I didn't know or wish I understood before it happened. I was absolutely taken advantage of because I allowed it. I had situational ethics because I just didn't know what else to do. I reacted to situations. I was always working from the outside in. Things would happen. I would react. I would, oh, I'll do it for this. And I have flipped that over the years and I'll work from the inside out. This is my structure. This is my business. This is what works for me. I am very secure and confident in that. And you can either take it or leave it. Thank you, Becky. You are the best. I hope that you guys found this useful. Don't forget, Flourish in Five first episode is released this Friday. Please take a listen and share with your friends. That's an extension of the podcast. Podcast is on Tuesday and it's also now. So we're releasing two podcast episodes a week. The regular episodes are usually like 10 to 20 minutes long. They're not long, but Flourish in Five, I wanted to keep five minutes or less. That will be available on any podcast player as well as behind the scenes YouTube videos. So you can share those YouTube videos with your friends. You can share the post, you can share the podcast. I don't have sponsors for the podcast, you guys. It's really done for free and I would love it. It would help me tremendously. If you could please just share it in the photographer groups that you're in or with a couple of your photographer friends when I release it, I would really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next video.